Assalamu alaikum. Today we will be discussing the major histocompatibility complex molecules and antigen presentation and processing. The major histocompatibility complex, or MHC for short, which is what I will be calling it from now on, are proteins that are expressed on the cell surface of all cells in the human body, or in mammals in general, actually in all vertebrates. They determine which of the cells are self or non-self, so which are from the body and which are from outside the body. How do they do that? They do that by basically uh, presenting an antigen on this protein. So uh, this protein will present an antigen on it. And with uh, whatever this antigen is, will basically tell the body, the immune system, if this cell is from it or not from it. They are encoded in the genome by human leukocyte antigens, HLA for short, genes that are present on chromosome 6. HLA genes that are present on chromosome 6. And this and they show co-dominance. So both the pater paternal and the maternal genes are expressed. There are multiple classes of MHC. There is class 1, 2, and 3. 1 and 2 are responsible for the self versus non-self and the an antigen presenting functions, while MHC class 3 is more responsible for functions in the complement system, and so it will not be discussed in this video. MHC class 1, as you can see, it's expressed on all nucleated cell in the body. It interacts with CD8 positive T cells, so cytotoxic T cells, the killer T cells, and it presents on it endogenous antigens, so antigens that are usually formed by the cell itself. On the other hand, class 2 MHC is expressed only on professional APCs, antigen-presenting cells. So antigen-presenting cells will not only express class 1, but also express class 2 MHC. It interacts with CD4 positive T cells, so helper T cells, and it will uh, present antigens that are exogenous, so it has received from outside, usually from a bacteria that is infecting the uh, body. The expression of these major histocompatibility complex MHC molecules is upregulated by type 1 interferons like interferon alpha and beta and type 2 interferons like interferon gamma. In antigen presenting cells in particular, you'll find that the toll-like toll receptors will also upregulate MHC class 2 specifically. Now, let's talk about the idea of codominance in a, uh, a bit so we understand it further. Here we have the chromosome 6. We have two copies, a maternal and a paternal copy. On the paternal copy, you can find genes for the HLA, the HLA genes, specifically HLA A gene, B and C, DQ, DR and DW, one paternal, one maternal. A through C genes are the ones responsible for forming MHC class 1 molecules, while DQ, DR and DW are responsible for forming MHC class 2 molecules. <laughs> so, MHC class, uh, you will find over here, we have an epithelial cell, for example. Epithelial cells are normal nucleated cells that are capable of expressing MHC class 1 molecules. So you will find that on it, you have MHC class 1 molecule taken from the HLAA gene, another one from the B gene, and another one from the C gene. Those are all from the paternal side. But also, since it expresses codominance, you will find that the maternal HLA, A, B, and C genes will form their own MHC class 1 molecules. So uh, any nucleated cell in the body will have at least three paternal and three maternal different MHC class 1 molecules. Now here, let's look at this dendritic cell. Dendritic cell is a professional, it is a professional antigen presenting cell. So this antigen presenting cell will be capable of expressing MHC class 2. So like in MHC class 1, you will find that it expresses DQ, DW, and DR from the paternal side and the maternal side. So again, it has at least six different MHC class 2 molecules. But also, don't forget that since it's a nucleated cell, it will also express MHC class 1 molecules. 
So it will also have at least six different MHC class one molecules. And so the total number of MHC molecules on an antigen presenting cell, a professional antigen presenting cell, you will find it to be around 12 different MHC molecules at all times. In some cases, you will find it up to 14 because the DR can be split into two different genes, an alpha one and a beta one in some cases. But usually the uh, number that is settled on is 12 different MHC molecules on a, uh, a, a single professional antigen presenting cell. Now let's talk about the structure of the antigen presenting uh, of the MHC in small detail. So uh, this is the MHC class one, and as you can see here, it is formed of a single alpha chain. As you can see here, it's one chain that is all made of alpha subunits and one beta 2 microglobulin that is associated with it with weak covalent bonds. It's mostly responsible for um, keeping the shape of the MHC as it is. Okay. Now between the alpha 1 and the alpha 2, this groove right here is the groove for peptide, bind uh, peptide binding. So the peptide that we will get from the antigen that we'll get basically from the cell, we will be presenting it here. This area is highly polymorphic, and that's why we have multiple MHC class 1 basically molecules in the human body. Um, 8 to 11 amino acids can fit in this small group. Only 8 to 11, you can't fit more and you shouldn't fit less. Now, the function of the alpha 3 area, remember the MHC class 1, can uh, bind to uh, CD8 positive T cells, the cytotoxic T cells. So this CD8 will actually bind to this area of the alpha uh, of the MHC class one molecule, the alpha three area, and it will basically stabilize the connection between the MHC molecule and the helper T cell on its TCR, the T cell receptor, and that's basically the function of this area alpha three. Now let's talk about the MHC class 2 molecule and the class 2 molecule will have two chains. It has the alpha chain and the beta chain and between the alpha 1 subunit and the beta 1 subunit you will find the peptide binding groove. The peptide binding groove in this uh, molecule is also highly polymorphic and it can fit 10 to 30 amino acids in it. So the MHC class 2 remember it will bind to and interact with CD4 positive T cells, which are helper T cells. So since it binds to these, you will find also that the CD4 co-receptor will be binding to the beta 2 area of the MHC class 2. So in the MHC class 1, the alpha 3 area will be binding to the CD8, while in MHC class 2, the beta 2 area will be binding to uh, CD4 on the helper T cells. That's basically it for the structure of the MHC. Now let's talk a bit about the presentation of antigens on MHC class 1. First thing we need to know is what type of antigens are actually presented on MHC class 1. We said they are endogenous antigens, but what does that actually mean? The antigens that are presented on MHC class 1 mainly include normal self-antigens because in the cell or in the human body every single cell that has an MHC class 1 so all nucleated cell must have an antigen presented on that MHC at all times if there is no antigen at all you will find that this, uh, the cytotoxic T cells will recognize th this cell as an abnormal cell and immediately try to destroy the cell so every cell will always have to present an antigen on it. So in the normal state, it will present a normal self-antigen and this cytotoxic T cell will, uh, will recognize it as a self cell and not attack it. In case of viral infections, we know that viruses actually enter inside of the cell and force the cell to form proteins that are beneficial to the virus, so viral proteins. In these cases, you will find that the cell will present these viral proteins on the MHC class 1. And once the cytotoxic T cell recognizes these proteins as, or these antigens as viral antigens, it will immediately attack the cell because it knows it has been infected by viruses. 
also, for example, talking about APCs that phagocytose bacteria, for example, they phagocytose them and put them in a phagosome. If this phagosome basically leaks some of the components of the bacteria into the cytoplasm, the APC will take these uh, leaked components and place them on the MHC class 1 for presentation for the cytotoxic T cell to be activated, maybe kill the, bacteria, uh, kill the APC because it basically leaked the bacteria, or just activate it to attack other bacteria, basically. Next, we have tumor proteins and misfolded or mutated proteins. All of these are basically abnormal proteins that the cell is ma are making, so either misfolded, mutated, so the function of the cell is compromised in this case, or tumor proteins, which the cytotoxic T cell really, really wants to kill as fast as possible. So if it recognizes any of these proteins on the MHC class 1, it will immediately trigger its activity to actually kill the cell. Now, all of these proteins, before they are, uh, before they are presented on MHC class 1, they need to be degraded to small peptides so they can fit on MHC class 1. As we, st uh, as we saw, it only fits like around 8 to 11 amino acids. So we can't put a full po protein on it. And this is done by proteasomes because proteins basically tag are tagged by ubiquitin. And once they are tagged by ubiquitin, ubiquitin will direct them to proteasomes, which will degrade them into small peptides that can be loaded on MHC class 1. These proteasomes are actually upregulated in the immune cells by interferon gamma, the uh, type 2 interferon. Now let's talk about the process of antigen processing for MHC class 1. Here we have a protein. It's any of the proteins we basically mentioned in the previous slide. So it can be viral, normal, tumor, whatever you want. This protein will be tagged, as we said, by ubiquitin. And here we have a proteasome. Once, prote once the protein has been tagged by ubiquitin, it will be transported towards the proteasome. The ubiquitin will dissociate, and the proteasome will degrade it into small, small antigens that can be loaded on MHC class 1. Now, let's take a look at the ER. The, in, uh, the ER will have some proteins that are extremely important for the, uh, uh, the uh, processing of the antigen. So here we have this uh, pore, which is called TAP. TAP is basically responsible for the antigen entering inside the ER. It will allow the antigen to enter inside of the ER. Here we have the MHC class 1 alpha chain. It's only the alpha chain. chain. There is no beta uh, 2 microglobulin yet. And to make sure that this MHC class 1 alpha chain is actually folding correctly, we have a chaperon that will bind to it to make sure it folds correctly. Now, of course, the MHC class 1 will be present in the ER. Why? Because the ER has all the proteins that are fated to reach the um, plasma membrane and either be exocytose or place as a receptor. So since it will be placed as a receptor, of course, you can expect to, it to always be synthesized inside of the ER. Now here you can find the beta-2 microglobulin that is waiting to be associated with the MHC class 1 alpha chain. And here you find this small peptide that's called the tapicin. Tapicin basically uh, binds to the MHC class 1 alpha chain. And once it binds to it, it will open the tap pore to allow the antigen to enter it and bind to the MHC class 1, as you can see right here. So the beta 2 microglobulin associated with it, and the MHC class 1 uh, uh, was bound to tapicin, and now the antigen will enter the ER and be placed on the MHC class 1 molecule. And now the ER basically will bud off and send this um, MHC class 1 molecule to the Golgi. Once it inserts the Golgi, you will find more uh, post-translational uh, modifications. More modifications will happen to the receptor, and then it will be sent to the plasma membrane where it will be pre uh, basically presented. And this is what, the, uh, what is done for MHC class 1 antigen processing in normal cells, in all nucleated cells. Now, let's look at one special case for MHC class 1. Uh, we call it the cr cross-presentation. In this case, we find that the uh, antigen presenting cell, so we're talking, for example, a dendritic cell. A dendritic cell wants to also present the viral antigen, for example. It wants to present it to the cytotoxic T cell, 
to activate the cytotoxic T cell because the dendritic cell is like the best cell in the body to activate any T cell. So it wants to present, uh, present this viral antigen to the cytotoxic T cell. But this virus is a stubborn one that will only attack, for example, epithelial cells. This virus does not attack dendritic cells. So the dendritic cells are not capable of getting the antigens inside them to present it on MHC class 1. And there's the problem. How does the dendritic cell solve this problem? Simply by phagocytosing the virus infected cell. So here we have an epithelial cell that has been infected by a virus. This epithelial cell is presenting on MHC class 1, as we can see here, but the epithelial cell isn't as efficient as the dendritic cell in activating the CD8 cells, the CD8 positive T cells, the cytotoxic T cells. So the dendritic cell will go towards this infected cell and phagocytose it. Once it phagocytoses it, it will take it basically take the antigens from the cell and place them on MHC class 1 molecules so they can be presented to um, the cytotoxic T cells to further simulate cytotoxic T cells to kill the viruses eff efficiently. And this is the idea of cross-presentation, which is a unique way of presenting uh, of the for the APC to present on MHC class 1, even if it wasn't infected with the virus. Now let's talk about MHC class 2 antigen processing, which is, in my opinion, much more easier. So here we have a antigen, the protein antigen. It's a large antigen because it was uh, taken from a bacteria. As we, as we said, MHC class 2 antigens are usually exogenous. So this is basically a, an antigen that is taken from bacteria. Okay, It's very big and it's in the phagolysosome. Of course, it's a phagolysosome since the bacteria was phagocytose and destroyed and now we get the antigen from it. So the phagolysosome will do what it does best and degrade the protein even further. And now we have the small peptide that is, perf that is perfect for loading on MHC class 2 molecule. Now let's uh, take a look at the ER. The ER has the MHC class 2 molecule. Again, of course, the ER will have it since the MHC class 2 molecule will be placed on the plasma membrane. Now we have another molecule that is very similar to an MHC class 2 molecule. It's the HLA-DM molecule. The HLA-DM is, as we said, there's HLA-DQ, DW, DR. There's also on the same gene, DM. This one is not responsible for antigen pr uh, presentation, but it's responsible for one of the functions that are present in antigen processing, and I will mention it in a bit. Now, there's also one more thing, which is this, the invariant chain, as you can see here. This invariant chain is important to basically stop the MHC class 2 from acquiring any antigen in the cell. So any antigen in the cell, basically, it can bind to this area, but we don't want that. So the II, this invari uh, invariant chain, will always be able to just lodge itself here to disable it for uh, disable the MHC class 2 from acquiring any antigen in the surrounding area. Now the ER will basically butt off go through the Golgi and whatever, and then after it goes through the Golgi, you will find that it will reach uh, the phagolysosome and the um, vesicle will fuse together. And once it fuses together, you'll find that the antigen will be placed on the um, MHC class 2 molecule. The HLA-DM will actually, rem it will remove the invariant chain and this a part of the invariant chain that actually binds to the um, MHC class 2, we call the CLIP, the class 2 invariant uh, peptide, basically. So this CLIP will be dissociated from the MHC class 2 molecule by the action of the HLA-DM, and the actual antigen will be placed on the, H uh, on the MHC class 2 molecule, and now the exocytic ex uh, vesicle will reach the plasma membrane where, as you can see here, the MHC class 2 molecule is actually presented on the plasma membrane. And these molecules over here will be uh, degraded or recycled and used again and again. And that is basically it for the video. Thank you for watching. Here are the resources I used. Thank you very much.